All right, the heat of Jamaican's Cup World Football is wrapping up as the second round in both the Manning and the Costa Cups are approaching. The Da Costa Cup second round, which is a knockout phase consisting of 16 two-legged ties, will begin on Saturday. Let's see the matchups. Irwin versus St. Elizabeth Technical, BB Cole, the 2021 Ben Fran well, 2019 Ben Francis Cup Champions play. Paul Bogo, Morant Bay play the reigning Ben Francis Cup Champions, Glenn Muir, Taki versus Cedric Titus. First leg live on Sportsmax Plus. You have to download the Sportsmax app for that, so get downloading. The Cartwright College, they barely made it in as a best third place team. They have the defending champions, Clarendon College, St. Mary High versus Garver Maceo who won the Da Costa Cup title in 2021. Black River versus Cornwall College. McGraw versus Edwin Allen. The 2021 Ben Francis Cup champions, Edwin Allen. Veer Technical versus Froome. William Nim versus Central, who lost in last year's final Central. Christiana versus Rossi's. Port Antonia versus the Manning School. Ocho Rios versus Happy Grove. That game will also be on Sportsmax Plus. Belair versus Mile Gully. Horace Clark versus Dintel Technical, Dintel Technical, the best team not to win the Da Costa Cup in the last decade. And Monroe College versus Manchester High, the two M's coming face to face. Now, on the flip side, the Manning Cup will wrap up their first round encounters on Saturday before starting the second round of the competition on Tuesday. The Manning Cup second round is also a knockout round with eight two-legged ties. Here's a look at the teams who have already confirmed a spot in round two. So from Group A, Kingston College and Heidel are safe. Jamaica College safe in Zone B. Haile Selassie safe in C. Stats and Excelsior safe in 4. Mona and St. Catherine, they are through in Zone E. St. George's College and Campion, they are through in Zone F. And Wilmers and St. Jago through in Zone C. Four spots are left to be filled. That's the second team, second place teams from Zones B and C plus the two best third place teams still to be determined. Now, joining us to break down some of the teams we will see in the second round is head coach of William Nib High School. So he has a horse in the race and football analyst Dwight Jeremiah. Well, he fought hard for a three points that he thought he should have had, but because of a yellow card that he thought he didn't have, he didn't get the three points, but his team is in the second round. If you know, you know. If you don't, I'm sorry. Dwight Jeremiah, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing well. Should have been at training, but yeah, I have an able assistant, so I'm there. But there's a, a lot of shoulda and woulda, as you just mentioned. But the clear thing is that we didn't get a yellow card, all right? <laughs> 16 second round matches in the Da Costa Cup. Well, I don't want to say home and away. Two-legged ties. Um, which of the matchups catches your fancy? Well, in, in, in truth, Ricardo, there's a lot of good matchups there. I mean, I looked at it this year and I said, whoa, 32 teams and some really good teams in there. I, I had a look at the, the Irwin uh, Stets matchup. I felt that would have been a, a close one and, and one that you could keep your eyes on. And that one played today. The three, three of the, the games were played today. Um, Irwin playing Stets today um, at Irwin. And um, also you had B.B. Coke. Uh, they played Paul Bogle at Stets. And you had Glenmuir who went to Morant, uh, to York Oval to play Morant, uh, Morant Bay. Um, Stets narrowly won that one, one nil. I thought it would have been close, and it was. Uh, so that one is still, I think, up for grabs. Uh, and when you look at the other two that were played today, Glenmuir, they won their game three goals to nil. And the other game saw B.B. Coke winning over Paul Bogle, two goals to nil. So, yeah, those happened today. I felt that one would have been close. Uh, Rossi's Christian, I think, will be close as well. Um, from what I saw of these two teams in preseason and earlier in the season, I, I suspect that's going to be a good one. The Monroe-Manchester uh, game, uh, that one, I think, will be will be another good game to see. Uh, Clarendon de Carchet, I felt, you know, Clarendon, they're the standard bearers. So I, 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 they, st they, they say the quality is a little less this year from them, but so high were Clarendon that you still haven't gotten too much close to them. So I expect that they should run away with that one. But I feel the, the, the Stets one would have been close and that one um, ended up being close today. 
Yeah, um, I, Grant Edwin Allen is another good one, I think, to watch. I notice you haven't said anything about William Nim versus Central, which I think is a really good um, round of 32 clash. Um, Central in the final last year, um, William Nim with their usual defensive quality, um, coached by one Dwight Jeremiah, but I won't put you on the spot. Clarendon College, though, Dwight Jeremiah, I'm, I'm usually not this nice, but I'm in a really good mood today. Good for you. Um, but Clarendon College, are they overwhelming favorites? Because that's what I'm hearing on the street, that this team will not be beaten this season. Well, I saw them in the opening games, a game I was on commentary, but they're, they're normally notoriously slow starters. But they were still good, much better than 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 their opponents on the day, and they 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 got. I I thought Edwin Allen, you know, can be physical and and difficult to play against. And over two legs, um, home and away, they brushed them aside. So that's speaking a lot about Clarendon. Like I said, I don't think they're as formidable as they were last season. But as I said before, such was their standard that they're still a stretch. And 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 yes, I feel. If you're going to win this, they're the team to beat. Uh, but no, for me, I would want to hope that on any given day, you can beat the best of teams. And yes, I, I wouldn't agree with you that they're they're not going to be beat because maybe I'd want to be that team to beat them. But I, I, I think, yes, they're, they're, they're kings in the armors and the armory of, of Clarendon, and I think they can be reached. Remember, you, have to, get through, be you have to get through Central first, Dwight. <laughs> well, you asked me about Clarendon, and I'm just giving you my perspective on it. But yeah, Central is going to be difficult. I did play them in preseason, but that's a long time ago. So we would have changed, they would have changed. So I'm, I'm expecting a really good matchup between ourselves and them. It was a stalemate in preseason, but you know, I, I suspect both of us would have been much better equipped to cause damage to each other this time around. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a really tough tie. And I'm, I'm gearing myself up for that one. Yeah, I'm sure you are. It can be so difficult sometimes to track the teams in the Dacosta Cup because you're you're talking about so many parishes. Um, and uh, I mean, a, a team that wasn't on the radar last season could suddenly be on the radar. Clearly, Clarendon College, the team to beat. Talk to me about two other teams that you have seen this season or that you know about who you think could go deep in this competition and maybe even challenge for the title. I'll tell you what, um, Dintil is always going to be there or there about. They, they did their preseason in our parish, spent a long time here. Didn't play against them, but they're always a formidable team when it gets to the busy end of the season. And you suspect that they'll be there at least into the, the semi-finals, and when you get there, anything can happen. Glenn Muir, who did well last season and really just had a bad day and, and fell out like myself at the quarterfinal stage, is a team that you suspect um, could cause some damage and could really go all the way. But they showed in the regular round, they were beaten by Olaba at one stage, held uh, by Central as well. So I think a lot of the teams have not been as consistent as you think they should be if they're going to really tackle Clarendon this season. Um, but those are the main protagonists, I feel. Stets say this is their year, but I, I think they haven't really gotten into gear. And, and it may harbor well for them. Some may say that's a good sign because it means there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, but I think uh, the Glenmuir, the Clarendon, uh, our teams, Edwin Allen, um, these are teams that are going to be there about. Um, Dintel really feel like they've invested a lot over the years and should do well. Manchester was quite good last year, and and I and they've really they're unbeaten, perfect record for them, winning all their games in their zone. So, Nothing yeah, new though. Team. Nothing new. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So really, no. It's when really you you set the cats among the pigeon, and you're going to see who are really the the real the, the real teams because you have disparities in the groups and the zones, as you said, over different parishes. You have some really weak teams in some zones, and they can really give you a false impression of what teams are really made of. But in this round of 32, I think you're going to really see. I mean, really, for me as a coach, it's one of the, if not the most difficult round because no other. There's not over another two rounds of game that 16 teams will be eliminated, and that's how difficult it will be. Yeah, you spoke about Manchester High. Donovan Duque is back, second coming at Manchester High. They've never won the Dacosta Cup, and, and clearly this is something they desperately want. Um, can Duque help make the difference for this Manchester High team? Well, what you get from Duque, what I've seen over the years, I mean, he's going to be organised, very difficult to beat. Um, 
sometimes you wonder though if that is at the expense of the attacking side of it and and you feel if they're going to do it um they would have to be able to 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 beat the likes of i mentioned clarendon and dintel um the edwin allens and the garvin maceo glenn muir as well um you feel like i i i think they might come up short again this season um uh, but I, I think they'll be there or there about in the semi-finals, quarter-finals, semi-finals, because he will organize them well. He will make them difficult to beat. But when you get to this stage, the goals will win the championship. So he'll need to be able to score. Yeah, I don't know how much of the urban area Manning Cup you have um, seen, but any thoughts on what is happening this side of the land of wood and water? <laughs> I look at it and I think, you know, the main teams that you expect to go through have gone through. In the, in the group stages. If, if anything surprised me a little bit, Kingston College. I mean, Vassal Renner is a good friend of mine and there was a big press release when he was appointed. And they were saying that they lost a lot of players. There was an exodus of players. A lot of youth players were involved um, on the 16 or 16 year old, but they came out of what was considered to be the group of debt. And they've topped that group um, quite easily in the end. If anything, you felt Charlie Smith who probably retained 80% of their team last year and, and Calabar with, with Price, you expected to have been more uh, dominant in that group and, and even Heidel, who have a lot of Premier League experience in their team. Um, I felt Kingston College did well there. Uh, Jamaica College, despite being dark points, you expected that they were going to be strong in that one. So when I look across the group, um, I think the main teams that should go through have gone through. It's really going to come down to the round of 16 now to see who is really going to set the thing alight. Yeah, very much the case. Dwight and Jeremiah, always a pleasure speaking with you. We are going to allow you to get back to training now because we know you need to put in the work because Central is somewhere in the land, and, uh, in the land of wood and water putting in some work, getting ready for your William Nib team. We'll, 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 we'll give a good account of ourselves tomorrow. I, I can assure you of that. I have no... Uh, I will be playing against Central tomorrow and Issa won't be involved at all this time around. <laughs> Let's leave that there. Um, thanks very much, Dwight Jeremiah. By the way, uh, Mariah, Lance would know this. I don't know if you know this, but William Nib is the alma mater for the great Usain St. Dio I know that. Oh, I'm sorry. We said that a million times on the show. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies.